Good morning. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, Son of God, thank you that you meet us with compassion and shower us with kindness. In the gentleness of your spirit, you welcome and receive us with humility. For you are the servant king who washed your disciples' feet. Thank you for being patient with us. Through the gift of your spirit, may we be renewed in your image, that your love may shine through us and among us as people of the resurrection, respecting one another, welcoming one another, forgiving one another as you have forgiven us. Help us to leave our old ways of behaving that was so damaging, like cast off clothes left behind. Clothe us with Christ-like virtue, with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and with patience. Thank you for being patient with us. Help us to be patient with one another. Amen. Today, we continue our journey with Paul in Colossians. And I invite you to read Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. As a child, I was fascinated by wardrobes, and I still love to open a wardrobe and wonder about all that it contains. Fired in my mind by that lovely novel, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And here in Colossians, Paul employs the language of the wardrobe. If I were to paraphrase his message, I would say it like this. Drop the old clothes that you used to wear on the floor. Leave them behind. Never wear them again. And open the wardrobe of Christ. He wants to clothe you in his resurrection life. Now, if you have a wardrobe at home, it takes courage to open its doors to a friend or a stranger because they will have their own opinion about the clothes that you wear, the clothes that you wear every day and the clothes that you have neglected and haven't worn in years but are still hanging there. And it's the kind of thing that popular television programmes focus on. Someone like Gok Wan can reimagine your whole wardrobe, inspire you to take the risk, to dress differently, to feel like a whole new person. That's the clue whole new person. In verse 9, Paul says that as you have stripped off your old self with its habitual behaviours and clothed yourself with the new self that is being renewed in the image of your creator. Isn't that a wonderful image? Like cast off clothes, you can leave behind all that once damaged and denied the goodness of God in your life and be clothed, as Paul says in verse 12, with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, 
patience, becoming more like Jesus. At the beginning of chapter three, Paul talks about death and resurrection. You have died, verse three. You have been raised, verse one. And in doing so, we may hear echoes of all that our baptism symbolises, leaving the old behind and embracing the new, abandoning a life that is self-centred and embracing a life that is centred on Christ. Paul expresses his desire that these Christians will be transformed in a radical and enduring way so that their lives speak of the glory of God and they shine with his light. In my last pastorate, we adopted the practice of encouraging candidates to dress in new clothes after they were baptised, so that the contrast between their old way of living and the new Christ-centred way of living that they were embraced was symbolised in the way they dressed. That was something many of them took to heart. I remember three of our candidates, Ola, Amma and Alalu, who all came from West African families and followed the West African tradition and had their cloth cut in three distinct and individual ways. But it was the same cloth, one purpose, expressed in three distinct and different ways. Now, of course, this isn't a purely individual thing. It's about who we are in relationship to God and who we are in relationship to one another. Paul insists, insists that we stop lying to each other because of who we are in relationship to God. For we are being renewed in the image of God. And in that renewal, he says that the great distinctions between people and his society are meaningless. For Christ is all, and Christ is in all. When we follow Jesus, we are called to recognise him in our brothers and sisters, in you and in me. But let me conclude by returning to the wardrobe. In verse 12, Paul says that because you are holy because you are loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience and in verse 14 he sums this up by saying clothe yourselves with love which binds all these together in unity. There are echoes of 1 Corinthians 13 here. These virtues are expressed in a Christ-like way of living, which includes the instruction Paul gives to forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. The words all sound lovely. This is one of the first texts that I chose to remember word for word. But practising, practising these words requires perseverance and trusting in God's good purposes so that the peace of God may rule in our hearts. So let's take each of these words and focus on them briefly in prayer, 
confessing where our lives fail to reflect these virtues and asking that God enables us to grow in them. So let us pray. Compassion. Compassion flows from a generous heart, concerned for the well-being of others and willing to share in their pain. Thank you for the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kindness. Kindness is such a simple thing. It's an attitude of mind, a choice we make every day to be kind. Thank you for the kindness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Humility. Humility is born of confidence in offering our gifts to serve with a keen awareness of the gifts and strength of our booze. Thank you for the humility of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gentleness. Gentleness is a sign of peace and a willingness to respect the other, especially where they are vulnerable. Thank you for the gentleness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Patience. Patience is testing because it requires us to wait, especially when we do not want to. It takes practice. Thank you for the patience of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Son of God, thank you that you meet us with compassion and shower us with kindness. In the gentleness of your spirit, you welcome and receive us with humility. For you are the servant king who washed your disciples' feet. Thank you for being patient with us. Through the gift of your spirit, may we be renewed in your image, that your love may shine through us and among us as people of the resurrection, respecting one another, welcoming one another, forgiving one another as you have forgiven us. Help us to leave our old ways of behaving. That was so damaging like cast off clothes left behind. Clothe us with Christ-like virtue, with compassion, with kindness, with gentleness, with humility and with patience. Thank you for being patient with us. Help us to be patient with one another. Amen.